Remember yesterday talking about the Michael Rubin 4th of July party, very exclusive, very extravagant, very swanky. I had let the league know that I was going to be talking about it in a podcast I taped at 11 a.m. Eastern. I didn't hear anything until after I was done, or maybe the email came through while I was doing it. The league has no comment on this question of where CEO of a company with a sports book with a very exclusive, extravagant party where surely the inherent value of an invitation is more than $250 and $250 is the magic number in the relevant portion of the gambling policy. How does that mesh with this provision of the policy regarding hospitality, gifts, and services from gambling entities? Now, it would be very useful to all the players and coaches and owners out there if the league would explain this policy, this provision in the eight-page gambling policy. And as I said yesterday, this is one of the prime examples of why people don't understand the gambling policy. It's eight pages written by lawyers for lawyers, not for the average person to read it and understand what they can and can't do. Somebody needs to explain what that means. Somebody needs to articulate examples so people will know, well, here's what I'm thinking about doing. Oh, okay, the gambling policy and the education they've given me, it tells me what I can and can't do when it comes to accepting hospitality from people who own and operate sports books. Now, my understanding is the league's position would be that there is no violation, that this is Michael Rubin acting in his individual capacity with no promotion of fanatics, no presence of fanatics. Now, fanatics may have paid for the whole thing, which kind of makes that argument collapse onto itself. And if that's the case, it creates a pretty convenient loophole for any other CEO or high-level executive with a sports book that wants to do the same thing. The sports book can't give gifts in excess of 250 or hospitality in excess of 250 or services in ex- excess of $250, but the person who runs the sports book can. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And again, this, this isn't because well, Michael Rubin's not doing anything wrong. He's not subject to the policy. The question is when someone who is a sports book CEO or executive provides these things to the individuals who fall under the definition of NFL personnel and the subject to the gambling policy, when and where are the landmines? We got 10 guys suspended because there wasn't enough attention given to when and where the landmines are and how to stay away from them when it comes to the bets that you can make. There's a provision in that policy about the things you can accept from gambling entities. Where is the line and who are the people from whom you can or can't accept things that are worth more than $250? It's a fair question. And it's the kind of thing the league should be thinking about, not no commenting on. The league should be coming up with clear guidance available to all players, available to all coaches, available to all owners about what the rules are. People are flying blind on this. Now I know how the players felt. How much really was told to them about what they can and can't do? And there's so many fans out there, and it doesn't surprise me because the knee-jerk reaction for so many fans, the players are bad and the teams are good and the owners are good and the players, oh, they should be smart enough. They've got so much money riding on it. They they can read like the rest of us. And I really don't think the NFL made it a priority to truly educate the players on what the rules are and aren't. I think the NFL's priority before this offseason was we need – the player to sign the paperwork that he received the policy. We need more than that. And we need more than that for these other provisions in the policy. And what I'm going to do at some point, I'm going to do a full review of that policy for my own purposes. I'm not going to bore you with it, but I'll bore you with other things. But where are the things in there that aren't clear? Where are the things that cry out for more clarification? Where are the things that need examples? Because if I'm subject to this as a NFL employee, not me, obviously, but if the players are subject to it, if the coaches are subject to it, you should want to know what it actually prohibits. And I think it's critical that all provisions in that policy actually be enforced and utilized. They can't just be meaningless. You can't just say, well, you know, forget about that one. Pay attention to this one, but eh, forget about that one. And that's one of the problems I've had with the NFL. And I've It's a very simple dynamic, and it's part of the advice that I used to give to employers. If you have a rule that you don't enforce equally and fairly and consistently, 
either start doing that or get rid of the rule. Because too many employers, and this is why I'm sensitive to it, just so you understand how my warped brain works. What employers will do, and I learned this while advising employers, and I learned it while representing individuals who had their rights violated by employers who wanted to fire them, and they wanted to be able to say it was for a reason other than some protected characteristic or behavior or activity, whether it is race, gender, religious practices, warning management about some unsafe condition that management would just as soon look the other way on. There are different ways that you have protection against what they call employment at will, where they can fire you anytime they want for any reason or no reason. What will happen is they'll go out and find a reason to fire the person. And they'll never admit that their motivation was the thing that they're not allowed to do. And the best way to do that is you pull out this stack of policies, yay high, and you find one. Oh, he violated this. Well, that's how we'll get rid of him. And if you have these policies that aren't consistently enforced, they become that ammunition that management uses to get rid of somebody they don't want. So that's how I started being concerned about having policies that you don't use, that you don't enforce, that you don't apply. Just get rid of them. Either apply them and enforce them fairly and consistently to everyone or change them or dump them. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.